Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and it's an exciting day today because I do love renewal. I do love taking out all these old declining crops uh, in the polytunnel today really, uh, but just a few outside as well, a few tomatoes and things like that and refreshing them with lovely new plants that I can watch grow and I love watching them grow. Of course, I love harvesting them as well, but it's kind of, you know, just that growth process. It's just amazing to put these little seedlings in and see them burst to life as soon as they get in the soil. Because, you know, they grow away nicely in the module trays for a few weeks, but, you know, you get to about three or four weeks and they're really desperate to get into the soil. And some of my plants are a little bit too far on, but I kind of just kept them going um, just so I could get a little bit more harvest out of the polytunnel be uh, beds. Um, so yeah, so what I'm doing with the polysol, well, I'm clearing the carrots, the beetroot, the peppers. In fact, we cleared the peppers uh, at the weekend uh, and the tomatoes, the courgettes. That's pretty much it, I think. Uh, so all the beds will get cleared. They'll all get reconditioned. They'll all get mulched. In fact, we'll also put nematodes down, clean the polythene, get them all replanted and uh, sit back and relax so uh, yeah I'll get on the uh, camera now and I'll just show you around uh, what we've got in the polytunnel and then I'll take you through it step by step as we uh, you know transform it from summer to winter it's exciting so it's all a bit of a jungle in here and the one tomato plant that's still got a lot on it is this indigo pear drop and it has been an absolutely amazing plant. This is one where we actually took, the, well what happened was I cut the main stem off accidentally when I was uh, taking the side shoots out because it was a little bit confusing and so I decided to grow on the side shoots and we've just had an amazing crop um, off these side shoots and they were lovely tomato. I've been really really pleased with them. Uh, so we're going to be ripening off these, obviously, at home. Um, pretty much everything else has ripened off. So I'm really pleased with the uh, the state of everything. If you look, you can't really see. There's a few little trusses. But by comparison with last year, we had huge quantities uh, that we didn't manage to get ripened off. But uh, as I say, mostly it's just the indigo pear drops today. Um, got a few courgette plants that we're going to take out and just give a basically a good clear out and then down here we've got quite a nice crop of beetroot and I really didn't expect to get anything off these beetroot because you know it's really shady underneath here um, but and they got a terrible absolutely terrible uh, attacks from leaf miner and then we've got some caterpillars in here. It's a real mess, really. Uh, so I'm really surprised, anyway, that we've got something off them. But we'll have a look later on at uh, the size of that harvest. And then, again, kind of crazily, I decided I'd put a run of carrots along the uh, other side next to the polythene where they get the maximum amount of light. Um, and I'm really interested to see whether I actually got any kind of uh, decent harvest off those carrots. And then, believe it or not, underneath all this shade, We've had peppers and I'll uh, just pop a picture in of the pepper harvest. But it's kind of amazing that sort of stuck in the middle of there, um, all that shade, we still managed to get a pretty impressive uh, pepper harvest, to be honest. So I'm kind of amazed that we managed to get all this out of this little bed, really, which is often just wasted space because what we really need is the trestle table. And of course, we've got here all the stuff that we're sowing in the outdoor beds and the polytunnel beds today and tomorrow and i'll not go through these in any detail because as i plant them i'll show you what I'm planting and then we also had peppers in here and quite surprisingly actually even though these got much more sun they actually didn't do as well as the ones that were stuck underneath that uh, trestle table in the shade so goodness knows why don't really know there were different varieties but anyway I'm gonna get on and uh, 
some more brassicas here which uh, are for spring. The first thing I'm clearing out are the cucamelons but this year I'm saving these little tubers to see if I can get an early start on next year. So that's phase one of the job done of many phases. <laughs> that's the tomatoes and the peppers cut out and uh, the main objective is really just to retrieve all of these you know, little clips and I guess I'm getting about 80% reuse um, quite a few of them break but then they are two years old so that's not too bad and these are the tomatoes that we harvested not that many so as I said I'm really pleased that we uh, ripened most of them off naturally and these few will just ripen off on the windowsill or not on the windowsill in the house all of this lot up and get it composted and I don't really have enough composting space so we're going to be using Debbie's plot as well and I do try and make sure that I get all of these tomatoes that are anywhere close to ripening out of the compost bin because I do not want millions of, of uh, tomatoes germinating in my compost next year. Oh, well that's all the foliar growth off and just the stalks now so I'm just going to twist these uh, roots out and get these chopped up. And it's definitely worth chopping because all of those tops which was a huge kind of volume of unchopped leaves all fitted in uh, I don't know maybe 12 inches of this compost bin and all of it was mixed with this pre-existing compost so uh, I haven't got any browns to mix in so this has still got plenty of wood in it and uh, so it should work as a brown. So that's the bed cleared and really the focus of this stage is just to get all of the old tomatoes out of the soil. Obviously I'll miss loads and so I'll get loads of seedlings emerging but uh, not too bad. But the next job while I've got access is to try and get this algae off the inside of the polytunnel and I will use algon as well which I'll spray on but I'm going to do that tomorrow because I don't have it yet and there are quite a few slugs about and obviously slugs are a nightmare in uh, winter in a polytunnel when you've got lots of salad crops so I'm going to water I mean this bed is reasonably hydrated and quite it's slightly moist I would say um, but I'm going to hydrate it by watering in nematodes, uh, slug nematodes. So I got a big pack, can't remember what it was, 180, 160 square metres or something like that. That is enough to do this polytunnel and the back garden uh, twice. So um, I'll do once now and then I'll do another one in two weeks time and that should be good. So. Uh, I'm gonna get it watered in there. Okay, so we're all watered in. Uh, before I did the watering, I put down just a sprinkling of uh, seaweed meal and composted uh, chicken manure. Um, I always just put a little bit down, not, not very much, um, like half a handful per square meter at this time of year. And then I've got these canes in. These will support the fleece which will go down the back of these, down that gap there, rolled up in a piece of wood, and then it'll hang from the shelf that I'm gonna put up along the top there. So, get onto the shelf in, it just hangs, it's a really simple construction, just hangs from these brackets up here, just straight into those. And this is vital for me, this shelf, for two reasons. One is, this is where all my overwintered brassicas and the like live. It's on the north side of the polytunnel so it doesn't shade the stuff underneath it. Um, and it's also where I clip the fleece when I'm not using it. So the, as I said the fleece goes down the back there, gets clipped on, rolled up, clipped onto here and so it's totally out of the way, it doesn't shade anything because I said that's the north side. Um, and then just is laid out over these beds 
as required and it only takes a few seconds to put it out about 20 seconds about uh, a minute to uh, put it back so there we go it's all the mulch now and the mulch i've used is spent mushroom compost and there's not a huge amount of nutrition in spent mushroom compost and which that's why i put always put a little bit of seaweed meal and an even smaller bit of um, chicken manure um, down composted chicken manure just to uh, give it that little bit of a boost and it's extremely wet and extremely cold so i'm going to leave it until tomorrow before i do any planting just let it more warm up and just uh, dry out a touch so phase six or seven i guess by now um harvesting all of this lot loads of beetroot loads of carrots hopefully not many peppers and so now it's basically a repeat really nice little crop of beetroot and bear in mind these are not the main crop uh, beetroot for storage these are just the ones to eat in october and so there's a nice little supply there and an even better crop of carrots i'm really fussy with these carrots these are gorgeous um so i'll get these cleaned up or rather debbie will probably help me come and do that and i'll get all this muck cleaned off here now the other side where i cleaned is not so important that's the north side this is the south side so this needs to be really well cleaned um, because a lot of um, the success of this bed depends on light coming in through uh, through this plastic here because this the sun will be low in the sky and it'll come directly in through the side here so that is a really nice little bonus so that's all lovely and clean I just need to get the mulch down well actually step by step first thing a bit of seed wean meal a bit of composted um, chicken manure and then watering the nematodes which has the advantage of hydrating the bed it's pretty moist anyway because it's had all those peppers and carrots and beetroot in there that have needed watering and then put the mulch on top of the uh, nematodes and then ready for tomorrow so that's the end of the first day of the polytunnel project and as a rule i don't really do busy days but uh, it's been a busy day today and i'm looking forward to tomorrow when i get everything planted it's going to be raining tomorrow so it's going to be really nice in here and uh, cool uh, it's just perfect for getting planted so i'll just quickly show you what we've got done and i'll see you tomorrow so all this is mulch now and i've cleaned all the paths and so everything's sorted there's a lot to be planted and obviously it's not all going in here I'll just quickly show you outside. While I've been busy in the polytunnel, Debbie's cleared this brassica bed and I've just uh, put the fertiliser and mulch on it. And we've also just taken the pea frame down from this bed with the radicchio in it. And it just needs a little bit of a tidy up, probably on Wednesday. Taking the last of the uh, outdoor tomatoes out. In fact, we don't have any tomatoes now at all, apart from the ones that we're going to ripen up. Goodness knows what we're going to do with all those green ones. Those tomatoes came from four plants. One, two, three, four. So this bed can be tidied up a bit now, ready for winter, because it's looking a bit scrappy. And I've just cleared this bed and fertilised and mulch that. So we're pretty much all ready now. I don't think we've got many beds that are going to come free. We've got this one that will come free. Uh, I'm not sure what's going in there. These pepper beds, which will come free in the next couple of weeks, they're going to be planted with spinach. Spinach is at home. And we've got that beetroot bed we cleared this bed these beds will be cleared this will be cleared 
and the New Zealand spinach. So quite a lot of that will be cleared, ready for planting in the spring. Um, so I might just pop something in, like spring onions I think, do pretty well outdoors. And we've got quite a lot of spring onions, so probably a lot of these will have spring onions in them. And mm, probably winter purslane or something like that. Corn salad, probably corn salad, once these uh, few carrots have come out. Mm.